Wow, there's more people in here than when we started. <laughs> that was awesome, Jesus. You can have it all. Yes. Let me just share this really quick, and we will get on our way. Hallelujah, Jesus. You can have it all, Jesus. It all belongs to you. There's nothing we can do apart from you. Okay. Make sure. Okay. Welcome, everybody. <clears throat> Glad you all are with us tonight. We are going to share some awesome things. Um, God is moving. And I um, just want to give a chance to, well, it's so powerful in here. You can have it all, Jesus. Lord, we just surrender. We just surrender to your presence. We yield our minds, our bodies, our spirits. We can do nothing without you. And Lord, we just step into your presence corporately as a group. Because we are your body, and you are the head. So we give you control. You can have it all. Because we want to know you in deeper ways, and we want to be like you more and more. Come and do what you want to do and say what you want to say. We will obey, Lord. Holy Spirit, we give you permission to deal with us in any way you choose, to change us in any way you have chosen for us as well. Come and have your way, Holy Spirit. We just release all the angels to move back and forth, to come and go on assignment. We surrender, Lord. We receive your presence. And even those online, Lord, they are, we are one body. And we ask, Lord, that you would open our spiritual eyes to see. To open the eyes of our understanding that we might understand. That you'd open our ears to hear what your spirit is saying to us this year. Lord, that we would know what's at hand and the things are far off. We would know what to step into and what to do. Lord, lead us by your Spirit. And we give you all the glory because we depend on you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Man, I was getting drunk by the end of there. That was so powerful. You can't have it all, Jesus. It all belongs to him anyways, doesn't it? Okay, so um, before we get started here, we'll just give everyone an opportunity. If you, the Lord spoke to you or showed you anything during worship, if you want to share with everybody else, um, you can come. I don't know if I want to say this, but Jesus kissed me in the, sur in the worship. There's nothing wrong with that. Come kiss me, Jesus. I'll take it. <laughs> I had the same thing, Marianne. Jesus. <laughs> okay. Um, wow. That, that was amazing. Okay. Um, so I, I was aware of some kind of creature with feathers. When we think of feathers, but it seemed like the feathers were on their face. And and I don't think I've seen it before. And I was wondering if maybe it was a large dove or something. But the feathers, okay. And they felt so soft yeah. in the presence. And then um, a prism where the white light comes through and is separated into the various colors. Manifold wisdom. Um, it's in Ephesians. Yeah. And the manifold means various colors various colors of his wisdom. So I saw him in the prism where his, his light was hitting the prism and he was separating and all his colors were coming forth and he was doing something with that 
with the lights coming through the prism. And um, two very long poles, P-O-L-E-S. And I, later, as I just pondered them, they almost would remind me of a, a lightning rods. Okay. Okay, so two like lightning poles, I'm not sure what they were for. Um, just this, the, again, the colors and his manifold wisdom and being present. And then the, la the song, Jesus has, okay. Jesus has it all. That one. When I started thanking him for the psalmness, for those who hear the sounds, who, who, who bring them here, who record, then I felt and discerned creative matter come into the room very powerfully. And then I asked for the angels to disperse them to everyone in the language that each one of us, because we all are unique and what the creative matter would mean to us individually. And um, it was powerful, that last part, what... And I feel like we went into some extremely high realms. Yeah. Okay. And then I saw where we're going in Pennsylvania. I could see the hill, you know, the one that we call it. We're in McKeesport, you know, where the church is, and there's the hill, and it's up on a hill. I could see the light hitting the hill during worship. And whatever, God, the angels going there, but I, I could see that in worship. And then just felt led to... During this glorious time to pray for Bill yeah. and Karina yeah. and Brenda. Yeah. So the doves, um, a lot of the angels that I see, um, the higher worship angels, a lot of them have feathers all over their body. And there is a, um, I don't know how you call it, a type of creation that is a, a different created being that is just one wing with eyes all over it. They're like flying wings, but they're not angels, but they're, they're part of the glory. There's a lot of higher beings in the realm of the glory that we haven't encountered before. And um, the prism, when you said the seven colors were separated, reminded me that the sevenfold, the sevenfold Holy Spirit, the seven spirits of God like to worship with us. They actually engage us in worship. So when you saw all seven colors separate, it's because the seven spirits of God are active in the higher forms of worship when we enter in there. And so they were actually participating, and you were seeing that. Yeah. And then the two antennas is God is, is uh, Ed might understand this, realigning us to the frequencies of the higher worship, just like from signal to signal, that God is synchronizing the church to go higher in his frequency, the higher frequencies of the higher high worship. That's why I was getting out of yours. <laughs> Anybody else get anything during worship? The, uh, when Sue uh, came up, she said about entering into obedience tonight. I was looking at this during worship, so it has to be the Lord, this statement. This was from last week's revelation we shared. But I was meditating in this during worship, and then Sue said it. So it says, your faith must be activated by your obedience. By faith, Abraham received God's promise and obeyed. By faith, Abraham endured, he persevered. As a result, Abraham took hold of God's promise, and so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Hebrews 6.15 The type of obedience I am talking about involves knowing the will of God and conforming ourselves to it in thought, word, and deed. Yep. Can you give um, one of those papers to Elena and one to Amy? Thanks. Um, so, uh, well, give her one. Yeah, just give her one. Just give her one. Give her one. There's only one. 
I know. Front and back. Just peace, be still. Okay. So, <laughs> what I saw during worship, um, the river of living waters was flowing through the room again, and I saw all of these pink and yellow flowers floating down the waters, and it was the fragrance of his love. The first thing I saw was the waters are always flowing because we're a corporate expression of him. But I saw these flowers begin to float down the water. And I began to smell them, his sweet fragrance. Because when we give, I don't like to call it a sacrifice of praise, but when we just give them all, no matter how bad we sound or good we sound, he loves our sound. He loves our worship. He just He loves raw worship. And the fragrance, the flowers begin to come more and more and more. And then I saw a hand in the vision go up to a candle and lit it with a match and begin to light the candle. And I feel like the deeper that we go in Christ, the more illumination is going to come to us, more revelation um, in that secret place, in that holy place where the lamps and the candles are. The deeper that we go into union with him, the more we're going to understand about who he is. And so it really is about God wants to take us deeper, to know him more. It's good where we are, but it's not enough. There's always going to be growth. There's always going to be development. There's always going to be a hunger for more. And that's one thing that I got through Deborah's worship is she's so hungry. You know, God likes raw worship. God likes us when we just cry out from the depth of our being. And um, he listens to that. Does anybody else get anything during worship? No? Okay. So Pat and I were camping this week, and um, we had a nice four days. But last night, I said, Lord, I didn't get anything from you all week. <laughs> you know, he said, because you're supposed to rest. <laughs> Not do anything sometimes, right? I mean, we always want to do. And those of us that are that are seers or those of us that get stuff, we're always trying to get to an end. What are you saying? What are you doing? And sometimes he says, I'm not showing you nothing because you're going to chill for a while. And so we have to be patient. Even in that, we have to be willing to just rest, to abide in him, to rest in him, and to know that he's at work, we're not. You can't, we can't produce anything apart from him. And sometimes he just wants you to take a break so that you're fresh, so that when he gives you something, the impact is even greater. And so this morning, as I was laying in my camper before I, before I left to go park it, um, the Lord took me into heaven again. And there are, there are many waterfalls that are in heaven because they all, have a different purpose. They all release different things about Jesus in their various places and purposes. But there's a great waterfall that's from eternity at the edge of eternity that falls down through the heavens into time, into the earth. And it's the waterfall of Jesus' life, the fullness of his life that he gave to men when he died on the cross for them. There's a great release that is still has been flowing for what 2,000 years and God wants us to know that we need to apprehend more of that and I posted this online so if you don't have the notes it's okay because it's on my wall but one of the ladies that read it she said we have always known that Jesus provides everything at the cross but we seldom live in the fullness of what we've received. In the days ahead, we will truly need to live and minister in all that Jesus won for us. And it really is true because we get, even in the charismatic or Christian walk, we can get stuck in a rut. We can be comfortable where we are in our day-to-day -day life with Jesus. But sometimes we have to press deeper and say, Lord, there's more. I want to know you more. I'm not satisfied. And so there's not a dependence and desperation 
what she was saying is we know that Jesus provides everything, but we suffer, we seldom live in the fullness of what we received. And that's a picture of this encounter I wanted to share with you tonight because I think it's important that we must begin to live our life in him. We know that the waters are flowing because the scriptures tell us that. But how much do we appropriate his life? How much? Where are the living waters in our spirit? Jesus said, out of your belly will flow living waters. But do we really see it flowing? Do we really feel it flowing? Do we see evidence of it flowing out of our bellies? That's something to think about. Because I think we really need to not just practice the presence of God. We need to practice living in his life. We need to increase his life through our life. So when I was taken up into heaven at the edge of eternity, I saw the great eternal waterfall that pours down from the heavens onto the earth below. There are different waterfalls in heaven, like I said, and they each release different things. But this waterfall is the greatest of them all. I mean, this was real. It was a real encounter. It wasn't just a thought. It was like standing in front of Niagara Falls as it fell over the side of the, the land. It was massive and powerful, and, and I was in awe just to stand there watching it flow. It was so loud and so strong, and I felt like this tall, because usually, basically, that's about what it is when it's an eternal waterfall that flows from heaven to earth. It was so big and so powerful. And I looked over because Jesus was next to me, and he said, this is a picture of the fullness of my life. It is flowing down unto those on the earth who would receive its graces that are available within me. You know, there's a grace for everything, right? The scriptures tell us that. But he said, in that flowing of his life, there's grace. But what it says to me is we're not always receiving the grace that's available for our needs. It's in his life. He said, I have all provision and I have all supply available to those who are mine. And I've been really practicing that. Lord, I depend on you. I trust you. I draw from you today all that I need. Out of the river of life that flows in me, I draw that life up. You've got to start practicing releasing that river of life in you. But he said here, My life was given for all men, but very few received the full benefits of my life into their life. That's something to think about. Am I living in the full benefits of Jesus' life through my life? Have I really embraced the fullness that he has provided for us? Now, Jesus said here, I desire that my children live within the fuller outflows of the expressions of my life. And I also desire that you release it to others. That means the church right now, according to God's standard, is releasing about a trickle. When there's so much pouring out ever since Jesus ascended to the throne, he released provision for everything. He's the answer to everything, isn't he? He says, I want my children to live within the fuller outflow of the expressions of my life. And I want you to release it to others. So there's a whole lot more that we can be living in. A whole lot more that we can release to others. And I think it was really on his heart. That's why he brought me there. He said, there is a great increase being released right now in this new era to those who will root their beings deeply in me. And in this hour, I'm telling you guys, you better root deeper because God's going to shake things more and it's going to get ugly as he exposes all the stuff more. You're going to have to root yourself even more. Get your focus on Jesus. God said he was going to shake everything till it all fell, and what remained is what we continue. Have we seen that yet? 
No, there's still a whole lot that hasn't been shaken down yet. But there's so many people that are stressed out because of all the worldly shakenness because their eyes are on the world. We're going to have to get our eyes on him. He said, root your being deeply in me. And he said here, it's also to those who will receive my graces. And those will overflow with my life moving through their life. Lord, I want all the graces that are available. That has grace. There's a grace for everything. He said, do not look at the world and at all that I am currently shaking in it. Do not look at the darkness and at the deeds of those in bondage to darkness. But rather look at me, because I am the true source of all life. This world is not going to sustain you. Governments won't sustain you. Systems won't sustain you. Even the religious church won't sustain you. When you don't perform, they'll kick you out. Jesus is your life, and he wants you to trust him. He said here, I am your life, and I will supply all that you need as you live your life in me and rely fully upon me. And he said, come, step into my life. And with that, he grabbed my hand and pulled me right into that big Waterfall, I thought I was toast. I mean, literally, it shocked me because it was so loud. It was bigger than Niagara Falls. It was like, yeah, man, you know, it's eternal. And we stepped right into that thing. He knew that if he did it slow, I wouldn't go. <laughs> but suddenly, we were standing right inside the water. And I expected to be nothing. But on the contrary, inside, it was calm and quiet. And I could feel his grace. It was quiet inside that roaring water because in his presence is, is what? Peace? And he said, all true peace is found within him. Now we stood within those rapid flowing waters and there was also, they were also, we were in it but it was also flowing through us. And that was an amazing experience to feel the impact of his life in the fullness flow through me because I'd never felt it in that measure before. There is a fullness, the fullness of Christ we are about to encounter in the church. The fullness of Christ. He said you can experience bodily through the Godhead. We're going to read those scriptures. There is a fuller experience of the fullness of Christ that the church will walk in in these coming days, but they will also live in. Lord, I want to live in that. I want to walk in that. I want to display that, Lord. Also with that, all fear left me, and I also felt great courage and strength. And it flew right through my mind. It's like it went right through my mind. Because most fear and discouragement and everything starts in your mind. And so it all flew out. And then everything became clear within him. Jesus smiled and nodded and we stepped back out. And the waterfall there in eternity kept pouring over the edge down towards the earth below. He has provided everything for man, not just salvation. Salvation is just the first step. Everything that he is belongs to us. Everything that he has belongs to us. Health, life, strength, wholeness, prosperity, everything. It's not just getting enough to get saved. You've got to be changed. Right? Or become like him. It says here, I also provide the fullness of life that comes from the Godhead will also flow down towards men. He said if men would just receive him and believe in him, then he would meet all their needs. So sometimes if our needs aren't being met, maybe the problem is us, because it sure isn't his problem. Sometimes when we struggle to believe in him, 
when we're not getting our needs met, when we're dissatisfied and our faith fails. The problem is us, guys. It's not in Christ. And so he was told me to tell the church this. He wants the church to come into the fuller life, the fullness of Christ. He said, tell them, Sue, I am more than able to give them a fuller life. My father is not weak, and neither am I, and neither is my spirit. He has been poured out for all men, and to those who receive us, they will live. Do not live chained with fear that rules those in bondage to the world, but live your life from within our life. Life does not start and then dry up and become a trickle and then cease. No. Life needs, think about this, life needs your expression to grow. For you are the carriers of our life. Just like your faith. If you don't feed your faith and exercise it, it'll die, right? If we don't use the life that he gives us, it'll become a trickle and die. We'll get dry, right? You have to use what he's provided for us. He said, you each are to live our life fully. And I woke up in the camper, and I knew that he was calling the church to awaken, to get up, and begin to appropriate his life more in our lives, that we have to go further and higher and wider and deeper, that we have to make an effort to draw from him and trust him for everything that we need. So I put some scriptures down for you to search out and pray into. Take these scriptures, break them down, and pray through them for your own self, for your family, your children, your homes, your businesses, wherever you are, for your neighbors. This was really important to heaven, or Jesus wouldn't have called me up there. Go tell them, Sue. So I'm telling all you what he told me to tell you. Okay. Colossians 1.19 says, in the Amplified it says, For it has pleased the Father that all the divine fullness, the sum total of divine perfection, powers, and attributes, should dwell in him permanently. Now just like Jesus said in the encounter, it's my Father, it's me, and it's my Spirit. The Father gave his divine fullness to the Son. And Jesus said, I gave my divine fullness to you. What are you doing with it? That's a real question. What am I doing with it? What are we doing with it, right? Are we living just by a string, by a hair, by a breath? Or are we living the fuller life? Jesus meant the church to be vibrant, radiant, fragrant, bright. And a lot of the church are afraid they're going to die tonight. They're so struck with fear and worry. He said, you have my life in you. Use it. So within his fullness, it says there's divine protection, uh, perfection, divine power, and all the attributes of who he is. There's so much of Christ that we have not yet explored even yet in a day, and we think that we are the generation that knows all of it, we barely begin to touch the manifold wisdom of God. Okay, so Jesus said to me, Colossians 2, 7 through 10, he said we need to have the roots of our being deeply planted in him, Right? It says here in verse 7, have the roots of your being, your body, soul, and spirit, your entire personality, firmly and deeply planted in him, fixed and founded in him. That means you can't be shaken. You're deeply rooted. Being con continually built up in him becoming increasingly more confirmed and established in your faith, 
just as you were taught, and abounding and overflowing in it with thanksgiving. See, we have to build our faith. We have to grow our faith. And the only way you grow your faith is by using it. doesn't matter if you fail. Get up and try again because you're using it. You're developing your faith. You're exercising it. So he wants us to be more confirmed and established in our faith. See to it, verse 8, that no one carries you off as spoil or makes you yourself captive by his so-called philosophies, intellectualism, and vain deceit, idle fancies, and plain nonsense. Following human tradition, men's ideas of the material world rather than the spiritual world. Sounds like our day with all the debates and all the everything going back and forth, all of our reasoning. He said, focus on the spiritual world, not just to know the natural world. You live in both worlds, aren't you? He said, also, rather than the crude notions followed by the rudimentary and elemental teachings of the universe and disregarding the teachings of Christ. There's so much worldly knowledge out there, even in Christian circles, that you can get so caught up in the worldly knowledge that you forget that Christ, who knows everything more than worldly knowledge, because he created the world, we're ignoring the higher spiritual life. There's so much out there. Be careful. You don't get caught up in doctrines, all these educational debates and everything. Be careful. I was listening to something the other night, and the Lord said, shut it off. They're taking away the nut from the knowledge of me. People are more concerned about all these other things, but they've forgotten me. You're going to get led off, led astray even with knowledge. And so some of these things, and he said the other area is trying to dig into the darkness and find out all the details of everything that's going on in darkness. He said, that's not your domain. I called you to live in the heavens with me, to walk on the mountain with me. You are a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. You are not, no longer a citizen of this world under the dominion of darkness. You have no business getting in that. So I had to... Um, get my attention off of some of that stuff. He says, that will do you no spiritual good. If you're in the river of life, then why are you in that? It'll draw the life out of you because you're focusing on darkness. Darkness will fade your light if you give it more attention, right? But if you feed on the light, you're going to get brighter, right? We have to be careful. He says, it'll rob your life. He says here, and that's all in verse 8. Be careful. Lord, I want to know about you and the kingdom. Jesus came preaching the kingdom. What it was like in heaven. What his father was like. What, what were the, the lessons on how to live a life in the kingdom. Jesus taught on those. He didn't teach them rules and regulations, did he? He gave them a couple. He said, love your neighbor, love yourself, and love me. Don't sin. But he didn't teach them about all the ways of darkness. He said, this is how you walk and live in my kingdom right now, how you walk in my life. You have a river of life in your belly. He was teaching them to walk in the kingdom even 2,000 years ago. Where are we today? He was really concerned. Jesus really was passionate. He said, you must grow in my life. You must draw everything that you can from me and give it out. He said, that's why there's no power or very little power. He says, power will come when you live in that power and you give it out. Verse 9, for in him the whole fullness of the deity, the Godhead continually to dwell in bodily form, and it gives complete expression of the divine nature. And he said, if I'm in you, 
and my father's in you, and my spirit's in you, and we sup with each other, then you can release the complete expression of our divine nature to others. Think about that. He said, you guys are living epistles that all men can read. What are you letting them read? I said, you're right, Lord. Now look at verse 10. Here's the whole thing about fullness. This is the whole reason for the encounter. And you are in him, and you are made full, and are having come to the fullness of life. In Christ, you too are filled with the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and you will reach full spiritual stature. You are coming to the fullness of life. My church is going to get to the point where they're so full that everything breaks out everywhere. And he is the head of all rule and authority, and over every angelic principality and power, dark or light. Who's the head of it all? Jesus. So why are we afraid? <laughs> He's the head of it all. But he said, you're coming into fullness of life. So what he was showing me is there's a fuller measure ready for us to apprehend and make it a reality in our life that we can, we can walk in more. There's more available, we're just not walking in it, he said. Now, Ephesians 3.19 says that you may really come to know practically through experience for yourself the love of Christ, which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience, but that you would be filled throughout your whole being unto all the fullness of God, which means you can have the richest measure of his divine presence and become a body wholly filled and flooded with God himself. Sounds like that big waterfall to me. This is what we're about to, God is about to inundate the church with, if we will receive it. He wants to flood us with himself. That's what it says. You are, that you may really come to know it. So when the encounter, when I was caught up there, he says, you need to really know it, Sue. They need to really know it. It's not head knowledge, he said. It's spiritual knowledge. It's your being being flooded, inundated with the power and presence and attributes of Christ. This is what God wants to release in our day. He's ready. It's been ready. But he said, you are now ready to move into that deeper, fuller life. Now, Ephesians 4.12. God's intention. What is God's intention? What is he doing? What does he want to do? It tells you right here. His intention is the perfecting and full equipping of the saints, his consecrated people that they should do the work of ministering towards building up Christ's body, the church. First of all, our primary duty right here is ministering towards building up Christ's body, not killing it, not cutting it off and bashing each other and trashing each other and exposing each other and beating each other up and disowning each other, cutting each other off and erasing them. It doesn't say that, does it? There's no power coming to those that do that. His intention was the perfecting and full equipping of the saints so they would do the work of ministering toward building up Christ's body. And why should we build it up? So that the body can develop until we all attain oneness in the faith and we all become one in the comprehension of the full and accurate knowledge of the Son of God so that we all might arrive at really mature manhood. I love that. The completeness of personality, which is nothing less than the standard height of Christ's own perfection. Now look at this last sentence, which is the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ and completeness found in him. 
God is going to have a healthy, vibrant, radiant church. That's why he's shaking everything. He said, I'm going to heal you. I'm going to deliver you. I'm going to save you. I'm going to cause my church to be radiant and victorious and overcoming. Radiant. Body of believers that flood everywhere they go. That's his purpose. If you break that down and look at it, Lord, help us. Help us to become that body that's one. We're many members, but we're one. We learn to love each other and receive each other and, and get over each other. <laughs> because we are becoming the fullness of Christ. That's something to think about. That's what the world's waiting to see. Lord, you are so amazing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your presence, Lord. So then John 1.15 said, John testified about Jesus, and he cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me has priority over me, for he was before me. He takes rank over me, for he existed before I did. He has advanced before me, because he is my chief. Look at 16 here. For out of his fullness, his abundance, we have all received. We all have a share, and we were all supplied with one grace after another grace after another, and spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing, and even favor upon favor, and gift heaped upon gift. Wow, that sounds like a flood to me. Have you ever had so much of Christ you had to tell him to shut it off? You couldn't take it anymore? We haven't got to that point yet. He wants us to live out of his fullness. That was such a, an amazing encounter. I knew that that's where we're headed. That's why the living waters are flowing. And we've been talking about it the last three weeks. Because God is on the move for an increase of his expression within his body. He's so going to inundate our lives that we'll never be the same. The reason is because the world needs to see the truth. And they don't need to see, yes, they need to see the truth of all the lies out there and all the bad stuff going on. But the greater truth they need to see is there's a God that is different than that, that tells the truth, he is the truth, and he is their life. And the only way they're going to see it is through a, a people that are full of him radiating him. And that's right at hand. That's why I was shown that. He said, this is about to expand. I'm coming with greater change. And it's not to destroy you. It's to employ you. He says, you're going to do the greater works. Part of the greater works is just not exercising and doing miracles. The greater works is displaying the fullness of Christ. Not just displaying it, releasing it. That people encounter him. And he said, I want you to tell them. Because he said, I'm ready for you to apprehend it. I'm ready. It's available, but you're not living the fullness of it. Could it be that we're not living the fuller life that he intended for us? That kind of would get you on your knees. Lord, we want to live in the fullness of what you've already provided. And it's already there, but we're not yet moving in it. Lord, we ask that you would change us. We ask that you would just lift us all in this room right now and everyone watching online, just close your eyes. We ask, Lord, that you would lift us all corporately into the eternity, Lord. That we would stand with you before that great waterfall, Father. That we would see what we're supposed to see in the measure that you want us 
to move into in you. Lord, that we would behold your fullness, your greatness, your life that is already flowing. But we have to let go of this worldly life to receive the eternal life that is still moving, still pouring. Lord, we long to move into those deeper waters, the fuller life, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that your living water doesn't just flow in our belly, it flows up into our mind, changing our minds, changing our thoughts, changing our emotions, changing our feelings, changing our personality, causing all the dry areas in our life to become moist, all the religious areas in our life to become full of liberty and freedom in you. Lord, wash away all the things that are in the way. Remove, Father, all these things that hinder you, that hinder us from living that fuller life. Lord, flow through our ears and remove the things that keep us from hearing your voice, from hearing the sounds of heaven, from hearing the call of the Spirit. Lord, we want to smell your fragrance. We want to feel your touch to feel your embrace. Lord, I want to feel those kisses too. <laughs> we want to feel your expressions. Take us deeper, Jesus. We want to swim in your river. And not just swim there to have an encounter, but to live there. Because it's in you. It's in us, but it's also in our lives. Lord, that we would be sensitive to and have a consciousness and awareness of the reality of who you are in your fullness. We don't even know what that means until we have a taste of it. But once we have a taste, we can never go back. Because nothing can compare to the fullness of your life. Nothing can compare to the fullness of you, Father. Nothing can compare to the fullness of the Spirit. Lord, we give you permission to change us. Lord, we give you permission, Holy Spirit, to change our personality. We yield our will to you. We die to our will, and we choose your will. Now we hear the sound of your rain. We hear the sound of your thunder. We hear the sound of all the angelic beings. We hear the sound of their wings flapping all around. <laughs> we want to know the kingdom life more than we know the earthly life. We want to be familiar, more familiar with you than we are with this world. We want to learn of the kingdom. Take us deeper, Jesus so that that fuller expression of your life, that fullness you said would flow through our bodies, would flow through our homes, flow through our families, flow through our neighborhoods, Lord. Life swallows up death. Life swallows up darkness and despair and hopelessness. Lord, let your manifest presence increase tonight in this place. That every one of us, Lord, begin to encounter you more. 
Lord, we are hungry, we are thirsty, and we're not satisfied with the lower natural life when we're called to live the higher spiritual life. There's so much more to this life than we understand. Come, Holy Spirit. Ed, can you play just some instrumental on the piano just for a little bit while we're soaking in God's presence? Can you do that? Are you able to? Am I interrupting you? Okay. This Holy Spirit will tell you, so just focus, guys. We're going deeper tonight. Lord, we want to give you just a few minutes. We don't want to, we want to linger. Your word was made flesh. And your word has to be made flesh in our lives. Lord, come and let your word be made flesh in our life tonight. Come and let your word be made flesh in our soul. In our heart, Lord, we want to never be the same. Lord, forgive us where we've missed it, where we haven't understood. Lord, increase our hunger and our desire. Increase, Lord, stir us, Jesus. Lord, we never want to be the same. We know that we can live in you more than we are right now. We know there's a fuller life. Your word just said that to us. And so, Lord, we abandon ourselves to you. And we ask, Holy Spirit, that you would lead us into those deeper waters. That you would lead us out into the deep with you. That our lives would be so changed, that we would be so overcome with you, that we would become like you more. Lord, awaken us. Give us the understanding that we need. Lord, come and visit our homes. That your living waters will flow down every room and every door in our homes, Lord, to all the people under our care, Lord. Lord, reveal yourself in the way that they need, not in the way we want, but you know the way they need to encounter you. You know the way that they need to receive you. You know the exact way to change them. So we release them to you. That you have the freedom, Holy Spirit, to express yourself how you want to with them. That you would bring life to our family members. That you would bring strength and healing and hope and great salvation, Lord. We are the church. We are the expression of you. Come, Holy Spirit, and do what you want to do tonight. Let the waters increase. Let the fuller waters come. That we would have the richest measure of your divine presence within us. Fill to the Godhead with the Godhead bodily. Leaking everywhere we go. You told me to tell him, Lord, and I did. So, Holy Spirit, take control and lead us where you want us to go. Let your anointing increase. Let revelation increase. Take us into the deep, Jesus. Where can we go? There's no place we can go but to you. For you are our life. And Lord, teach us how to live in that life. 
what it means to live in that deeper life. Teach us what we need to change. Teach us where and what to do. We surrender to you, Lord. And Lord, as we're sitting here in this room together, come and do what you want to do. Lord, we release breakthrough into everyone's life that's here and that's watching online. But beyond breakthrough, we release full transformation. Lord, come with your fullness in every area of their life, of their businesses, of wherever they are. Come with your fullness, Jesus, that we might live in a better way today. Come and bring truth. Come and bring life. Come and bring justice. Come and bring recompense. Come, Father. Many in the body of Christ don't know you as Father. We don't know the Father's love. And Lord, we open that door tonight and we say, Father, we want to know you. We want to know the power of your love that is able to change our lives. Father, we want to know that love that you gave to Jesus the fullness of yourself that we just read in the scriptures. You gave it to your son who gave it to us. Father, we want to know you in that way. You want to know the power of your life. For you so loved us that you gave your son to die for all of us. You gave him freely of yourself. And there's no other way through which we can be saved. There's no other way to live. But Lord, we receive all the benefits of your life today. Lord, catch us away as we come and go tonight, as those online go about their lives, let their lives change from this moment on. Lord, let them have dreams and visions and encounters with you. Catch them up, Lord, into heavenly places and reveal yourself to them. And give them messages, fresh bread from heaven, fresh messages for the church, for for the world, solutions from heaven. Lord, you have answers for this world. You have answers and solutions for the brokenness. And you have wisdom ready to dispense to help people that are crying out, Lord, to you. Come with your fullness, Lord. Release it in our lives. We're ready to appropriate it. Now we want to live in it and bear fruit. We trust you, Lord. We trust you, Jesus. Lord, release your healing presence in this room. We thank you for change. We thank you for life. We thank you for fullness, wholeness, and completeness that only you can bring. And we surrender to it. Come, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Lord, I thank you for healing Brenda right where she's at. Lord, just heal her as she's laying on her bed or sitting in her chair. Just totally heal her from head to toe. Thank you for healing Karina, revealing your love to her. And so changing her father, changing her father, changing her home. Father, open the door to your love. We'll never be the same. Thank you, Father. It was Brenda, Karina, and who was the other one? Oh, Bill. (laughs) Father, we release 
the fullness and to Belle and Betty, Lord, in the home, Susan, all of our families and friends, our children, Lord. Father, let the revelation, the encounter with your love so change body, spirit, and soul. So change our homes, so change our lives. We'll never be the same. Doesn't matter how young or old we are, it all starts with the love of God. So, Lord, let the fullness go down into their homes, down the hallways, in through the doors and windows, into their beds. Lord, visit them with the fullness of your presence, that they might have life and have fullness of life. And, Lord, come with your wisdom and show us what to do for the days ahead, how to prosper, Lord. Ways that we can more be more effective in our duties, Lord. What we can do in agreement with you. Lord, come and direct us. Come and guide us. And we will give you all the glory as you change our story. <laughs> Thank you, Father. There is such radiant light in here. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. You have freedom and liberty and joy. Lord, remove all the stress. Just remove the effects of stress, Lord, off the body the mind, the spirit, that your peace. And you said in you is there fullness of life, there's fullness of joy, there's fullness of peace. I just agree with those online, Lord, fullness of life, fullness of joy, fullness of peace. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There's such a sweet presence of Jesus in here. I just see green grass growing everywhere on the floor under your feet. There's such a richness coming into your life as you explore the deeper, fuller fullness of him. I see green grass, a richer, fuller lushness of his presence in your life. Like green pastures, rich pasturage. He wants you to live in his life and live in his fullness and know that he is able to keep you and able to provide and able to guide and able to sustain you every day. Draw on his life. Be full tonight and be ever filled, daily filled. Every day, drink some more, eat some more of him. He said, Sue, you can live a full, rich life in me. And you can be happy in every season doesn't matter what seasons men go through. He said, you live in my season. And you live your life through me. And you're not affected by the things that men are that are not in me. He says, because you're rooted in me. Lord, teach us to live that rooted life, that fuller life. Thank you, Lord. How many feel different in the room? You feel different? No? <laughs> There's such a peace in you, such a grace, such a rest. You guys, live your best life now because your best life is Christ's life. He is your life, and he will be your strength. He will be your hope. He will be your guide. He will sustain you and he will prosper you. Why? 
as your soul prospers. So if you could get this to begin to agree with God, you'll prosper in every area of your life with him. So we bless you tonight. We're not going to keep you. Do you have anything, Pat? Oh, come. Sorry. I was gone. I'm sorry. <laughs> Before we go, I'll just take the offering <laughs> for the salvation of God Church. Hallelujah. The links are in the video, guys. We thank you for partnering with us in the kingdom. You can give online through the Cash App link or the PayPal link, through Givelify or Venmo, or even through, if you message me, Susan Giomera, you can give that way through Messenger as well. You can give here in the bucket. Um, there's no other best place to sow is in life, is in his presence and kingdom. We pray tonight that you guys would be encouraged, that you would go home and just soak in his presence and tell him how much you need him, want him, and how much more he can come in. It's time to shine, church. We are the light. It's time to be very bright and full of joy even tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Ed. That was amazing. <laughs> it was powerful. It's powerful. The presence of God is so strong. Thank you. That's okay. That's what he wanted, yeah. See, if we just follow the Spirit, you know, every time we come here, we should leave different. That's my hope. My expectation is, Lord, I'm coming. Even with my foot in the brace and having to sleep in a chair and I, I have to slow down and depend on God. You know what? I was hungry. I said, I'm not staying home. I'm not missing nothing that God has for us. And it's a time to be determined. Lord, we're not missing anything. And he said, you're not. But you're not. Everything that's available, my people aren't apprehending it but that's changing because i'm getting it all and so will you so make mama proud and go get it in jesus name i get it turned off the okay